Welcome back to the Chrono Talk channel. In this video, I will talk about the anti shock device. So the anti-shock device is not a device that protects the entire movement uh, against shocks, but only a very specific part of the movement, which is the tip of the balance wheel staff. And why is that? Because uh, the path of energy that comes from the mainspring, the, the last point is the balance wheel, is where the energy or the force of the mainspring arrives more diluted. And at the same time, the balance wheel, because it's the regulating organ of the, of the watch, is part of the regulating organ, it's very important that it moves as free as possible. For that reason, it's very important to have the least friction possible at that point. So the balance wheel can move as free as possible, even receiving less energy than any other part of wheel of the movement. And that means that the tip of this, the balance stuff is very, very small and thin. It's, it's, the diameter is very small and they have to support uh, the balance rim, which is very heavy because it has to be heavy to be stable. And because of that, this is a part of the watch that is very susceptible to deform or even break in the event of, a, of an impact or a shock. And that's why the anti-shock device was invented to solve this, this, this pain of the, the watch user or even, even pocket watches had uh, this problem because actually every, every watch that is not stationary, every watch that you can carry around is susceptible to, to receive an impact or a shock. And that's why the anti-shock device is considered one of the greatest inventions our greatest evolutions in watchmaking during the 20th century. So how this specific part of the, of the movement was before the, the anti-shock device? Actually, the, the balance staff, to work with least friction as possible, uh, it is mounted on, on a couple of jewels. You have the base jewel and also the cap jewel. Uh, there is a small space between them where the oil sits. So this construction also serves as a kind of a oil reservoir between the two jewels. And then the, the tip of the stuff goes inside the base jewel and it sits on the cap jewel. This way, when the balance wheel is working on horizontal, it is just sitting on just the point of the of the stuff where the friction is very, very, very small. But of course, when you receive a shock, what happened is that the the tip of the stuff get goes like this uh, on the jewel and can uh, deform or even break. So what the anti shock device does is to absorb this shock by mounting this pair of jewels in a completely free block. But a little bit before I go into how it works, I want to go a little bit in the history. Uh, this was developed during the 1930s. Dinka block was invented uh, in 1933 by a company called Universal Escapements Limited from Le Chaudefonds in Switzerland. It was developed in more developed in 1938. And in 1950, it was uh, patented and named Inca block. So Inca block became a trademark. In the early 80s, uh, in the early 80s, the company changed its name for Portescap, and then it was sold again to a new company that uh, the company now calls Inca block. So Inca block now is a company that produces the 
the Inca block itself and also the Novo Diac, which is a very similar system, only a little bit more cheaper or less costly for more budget movements. And it also makes uh, other small components for escapements and etc. The other very competitor of Inca block is the Kif. Uh, made by a company called Keith Pereshock, which basically makes the same thing, only the some components have a different uh, design, but the functioning is exactly the same. So Inca block is still the most popular anti-shock device that you find in basically all the ETA movements, while Keith you will find in brands like Rolex, Audemars Piguet, Gégé Lécoute, and also other brands that are like, uh, they are true clients of the Keith brand. So they use this on all of its products. Even uh, Tudor, I remember that Tudor, when it used the ETA 2824, uh, they made some modifications to the watch and they replaced the original Inca block that comes from with all ETA movements f uh, with a KIF anti-shock device. And also there are other manufacturers in other countries like the Japanese industry also uses uh, the anti-shock device, which is exactly the same thing, but made by the company itself. For example, Seiko used the famous Diashock and Sitzen use a system called Parashock, but they are basically the same thing. They, they work all the same. And how it works, finally. Uh, basically, before the use of the anti-shock device, the main jewel was set on the balance bridge or the main plate of the movement so it's completely fixed. And then the cap jewel was set on a small plate that was screwed in base. Usually it was screwed in right over the base jewel. So this was completely impossible to move and to absorb any shock. So the, the anti-shock device comprises in a, basically a metal block, small block that have the main jewel and then the cap jewel goes over it and it can move freely and it can absorb the shock by the use of a spring that holds it in place. So basically if the watch receives a shock, uh, when the, the stuff tries to go sideways, it can move the block a little bit or even move the block up and down and the energy will be absorbed by the spring. So it's very easy, basically very easy uh, the way it works, very ingenious as well. And even though it's, it's a very precise part, the, the level of manufacturing to make a good and effective shock absorber have to be very, very, very high. The dimensions have to be absolutely precise to make the block slide over its sides without any kind of friction to really absorb the, the impact. And also there is a secondary advantage of the, the anti-shock device. That is that basically on older watches without the anti-shock device, where, when you have to clean and lubricate the, the scap jewel, because the, the lubrication there is very critical because as I said before, this is a place that requires the least friction possible. So the condition of lubrication there have to be absolutely perfect. That's even a criteria that good watchmakers use to evaluate the condition of lubricating of a movement by inspecting uh, all the jewels and especially the cap jewel of the balance wheel with a very powerful loop like uh, 12, 15 or even 20 times of amplification to see if the oil is still there uh, held by the surface tension between uh, the base jewel and the cap jewel. Then you can see uh, a small ring where the oil is. So a watchmaker can evaluate if the oil is still there or if it's clean or not. And in case it's not good, it it means that it's one of the criteria used to decide if a watch needs an overhaul or not. So the lubrication there is very important. And before the use of the anti-shock device, sometimes you had to disassemble the entire regulating organ 
which is a, it is a pain because you lose all the adjustment and regulation you've done before. With the use of the, of the anti-shock device, since the block with the base and the cap jewel are completely separate because they have to move freely, uh, if you need to lubricate this, you only have to lift the, the spring or remove the spring in case it's a completely removable spring like the Novo Diac, and you just clean the whole block, lubricate, put it back again without touching on the regulating or the regulator of the watch so you doesn't lose any adjustment you've done before. Also keep in mind that some movements use a cap jewel for other wheels of the movement. They are not shock absorbers because they don't have a movable block but they still have a spring that holds the cap jewel and they have a small amount of absorbing capability but the main reason is to serve as a oil reservoir and also to be to take advantage of the cap jewel to have less friction as possible for example for the escapement wheel so the the tip of the stuff uh, rotates over the cap jewel so that's not very uncommon to see uh, cap jewels on other wheels that is not the balance wheel, but they are not shock absorber and they have a, a specific uh, name like uh, Keith makes the dual fix and Seiko makes the dia fix, but they they are basically the same thing They work the same and the purpose is to act as a oil reservoir for certain wheels. They are expensive So uh, you, you don't find them in, in very popular movements, but a lot of high-end uh, movements use this kind of device. So that's it. Basically, that's what makes the, the anti-shock device one of the greatest inventions in watchmaking. It became uh, more popular during the 1950s and basically 1960s it was already a standard on the on the, the whole Swiss and Japanese industry. It, it is basically an essential part of, of a movement. And it's actually during those times when not all the, the watches had uh, anti-shock devices, some cheaper brands, because the, the higher, the, the, the better watches, uh, they didn't need to advertise their technology, which were always the highest possible, but cheaper brands, more popular brands use it to use the anti-shock device like a form of status. So they they bring in the dial the, the, the information like Inca block or shock proof on the dial or the case back. It's a, it was a, a way to make them more, more sophisticated or more valuable compared to the other entry level or popular brands. So that's it. I hope you like it. Hope you learned something new from this video. Uh, don't forget to give me your thumbs up for this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel in case you didn't yet. And also spread the words with your friends that are also watch and watchmaking fans and keep watching.